How's it going everybody? In, in this video, we're gonna take a look at understanding at a high level QoS or quality of service as it relates to the V-Edge devices for SD-WAN with Tela and go from there. Now, I'm not gonna go into you know all the, the super deep dive on the scheduling architectures or anything like that. I'll give you a kind of a Cliff Notes version of what I have learned about the particular QoS architecture and stuff like that to try to keep it simple. Because at the end of the day, it's QoS is, regardless of what platform you're on, in my opinion, is difficult no matter what level of certification you're at. CCNA, CCIE, or anywhere in between, QoS is just a monster. So my goal is to try to keep this topic relatively simple. So, and I'm not gonna go into any real, real depth here. Um, but the basic idea for us to run with QoS is to be able to control traffic, right? There's a number of ways of doing doing that, and one way for most of us is to implement some sort of filtering policy to control what routes can propagate to where and things like that. But that doesn't affect the actual data plane, right? How fast a particular device can send traffic or anything like that. What happens if you want to slow traffic down or you get an email from the provider saying, hey man, you know, I don't know if you knew this or not, but you're sending a lot more data than you're supposed to be. So for example, one of the things that a lot of, uh, something that's not as well known is uh, colo providers will actually, uh, they'll set up a, an agreement with you and they'll say, you know what, we'll so so you access for, I don't know, like, We'll say we'll give you 25 megabits per second to your device for 100 bucks a month. Well, not the greatest deal in the world, but you're not really paying. It, it, it's it's good, right? Not horrible. That's all well and great, but if you go above that, that that rate, right, the 25 megabits per second in or out, especially if it's symmetrical, we're going to charge you more, right? So it might be we'll give you. Over the course of a 30 day period of time, we'll give you 24 hours to where you can be above the 25 megabits per second, right? So basically we'll give you one day out of every month to where you can spike above 25 megabits per second on a regular basis. You're like, okay, cool. Well, the problem with that logic is if you do that consistently day after day after day after day, you're not gonna be paying hundred bucks a month. You're gonna be paying more than that, potentially hundreds of dollars more, you know, and that's where understanding how QoS comes into play is really, really important. So why does this matter? Well, if it comes down to you trying to provide this as a, uh, you're implementing a solution and that solution's budget is dependent on you staying below a certain monetary value, then that's really important because you wouldn't want to have your, a low, capital expenditure, you know, a low upfront buy, for example, for something, outweigh, be outweighed by your operational expenses to keep that particular feature on and running. So if you're going out and buying equipment to place inside of a co-location data center, or colo as we commonly refer to it, but you only get 25 megabits per second as your internet connection, and you're consistently exceeding that bit rate for a 24 hour period of time, guess what? The provider is gonna to start to charge you more because you're going above your agreed throughput, your, your agreed limit. So that's one reason why companies do it, is to not get charged more over the course of a period of time. So could you bump that up for a period of time? You probably could, you could probably burst, and some the provider will often have a chart and say, okay, if this is your if this is your CIR, your committed information rate, this is what you are buying from us for internet access, but yet your, you know, your actual utilization is up here. Well, whatever the in between is, so in between here, whatever that in between is, you're gonna have to pay for. And you're like, oh, that sucks. How much is that? Well, it could be 50 bucks. It could be 500 bucks. It depends on the provider. So what happens if you're in a situation where the CIR is X and you're down here? Well, if this is your actual utilization and this is what you're paying for, guess what? You're under. You don't owe them any more money. You could probably, if this, if this is the consistent run, right? If you're way low and your CIR is up here, you might even be able to bring that down as your operational expense per monthly. You might be able to bring that down. Operational expenses mean it's recurring. It happens 
every month or every uh, every payment increment or payment period, you had to pay X amount of money for that particular uh, feature. Now let's talk about it from an MPLS BPM perspective. How often do customers actually get gigabit MPLS service when they have a gigabit interface on a router? Well, the reality of it is, is not very often. More often than not, most of the customers I've worked with will have a gigabit interface, but they'll be paying for maybe 100 megabit or something along those lines. So that means if your capacity is up here, gigabit capacity, but you're only paying for this, right? You're only getting this. Everything in between here and here is overage. So if you're symmetrical, meaning what you send and receive cannot exceed 100 megabits per second, well, that's a bad thing if you're not capping that up here. So what you can do from an operations perspective is set up shaping to bring your actual throughput down to meet or mirror what your committed information rate is or your CIR. Okay, so how would you do that? I'm gonna show you that in the next video and how you actually configure shaping. But shaping's job is to slow things down. Think of shaper as no different than a funnel, right? You're trying to, has anybody ever gone to a large, to a venue? For example, you went to a concert, right? Or you've been in a very large auditorium you know, I've got kids, they go to school, I have to go to an auditorium every once in a while for, you know, a play or some sort of school event. You know, and you pack, the, the auditorium's packed with people, right? Well, not, to, not, not right now in 2020, but 2019, we used to go to these things all the time. You get hundreds of people in this room, and you only have a couple exits, right? You'd have, you know, maybe a north exit and a south exit, maybe an east exit. Well, guess what? You got this flood of people, right, that are all trying to go through these double doors. So what ends up happening is the people on the way back have to wait very, very, very patiently until the speed increases towards the front when they're able to go out the door, right? That's what a shaper does. A shaper slow things down. What's a policer do? A policer is, for those of you out there that have ever been pulled over by the good old fashioned cops, shout out to my first responders out there. If you've been pulled over by a cop, I'm there with you. I've been pulled over. It is what it is. When you get pulled over, they're policing you, right? You exceed the speed limit, uh, maybe you got a busted tail light, your license plates expire, whatever the reason they pull you over. They pull you over and they, you know, sometimes they'll be like, hey Rob, you're going way too fast, man. Like, I'm my, my bad, man, my bad. I, I understand, you know, my fault. I should have been paying more attention. You know, if you own up to it, it is what it is. Uh, you know, I'm gonna give you, uh, I've only, out of the three times I've been pulled over, I've only gotten one warning. The other two I've gotten tickets for. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, justifiably so, I suppose. But at any rate, I get pulled over. I get a ticket for it. Well, when you get a ticket, that means you were dropped, right? And a lot of times what will end up happening is you get pulled over. You have to stop what you're doing. You have to, you know, it's a rigmarole that the cop has to go through, do their job. You know, and they come back, they're like, you know what, this is your first offense, I'm gonna let you off with a warning, just please slow down. Sure, no problem, I can I can handle that. And that slows people down for the most part for at least a little while until they're like, well, it's been a couple of months, let's go a little quicker, and you get popped again. This time you get a ticket, right? Well, a ticket means that you often will be remarked, right? A remark, what's a rewrite? And I'm a, um, a remarking means that you're gonna, there's something's gonna happen to you, right? You're no longer gonna be able to go out, go along the path scot free. So, what happens when you get remarked? Well, if you're, let's well, say you're a voice over IP packet and you're trying to fly through the network as quickly as you can, right? You've got your lights and sirens on, you know, you're, you know, you're Bob talking to Sue from branch one to branch two, everything's going great, and then all of a sudden the traffic stops. Something happens and you're like, why did I get policed? This is not cool, man. Pardon me, I got a cough. If something happens to that packet and it gets dropped, it's gonna be a noticeable difference, right? Well, voice over IP packets are actually marked with what they call expedited forwarding or EF, which is DSCP, Differentiated Services Code Point, marking 46. When you get traffic marked with DSCP 46, think of that like uh, an emergency vehicle going down the road with lights and sirens. They're in emergency mode, right? They're trying to get somewhere in a hurry because, well, somebody called them and they're trying to get to, you know, destination B as fast as they can because someone needs their help. Well, voice over IP packets are the same way. They're, they're a, they are delay sensitive, which means that they're slowed down 
And if the words that are coming out of your mouth uh, over a phone call start going like this and they start going super slow and then all of a sudden it just drops, right? You might get a, like some, I, I could go, I, you can't get the words out, right? Well, the person on the other end of the, the, the speaker, right, the, the sender, yeah, but we went out to so-and-so's house, we, you know, rode horses and had a great time and the other person's going, hello? Hor, hor, what, 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 horses? What? They can't understand what you're saying, right? So the end and connections online, but the packets that are being allowed to be sent through the network are being slowed down somehow. Uh, shapers are great for voice over IP because they slow things down, but they don't drop them. But if you shouldn't really use a, sh a policer with voice over, a voice over IP because of the fact that it, well, it's going to drop it, right? And when you get traffic that's dropped, that's no bueno, right? That's not what you want to have. So in situations where you have a problem with drop packets, that's when you're going to be noticing things. Like for example, if you're watching a video stream and you notice that it gets all pixelated and then you know the, the video comes in or the resolution goes really bad to where it's really, really blurry and you can't make things out, a lot of times the bandwidth is constricted and you know, maybe that video flow needs a certain bit rate to work effectively to, to where it comes in clearly. Like the video you're watching right now. If you're watching this in 1080p, it's probably going to be running across your network at a couple megabits per second, right? But now if you're watching this at 240p or 480p, it's going to be pretty blurry. You're going to be like, what is that? Does Rob have a goatee now? I, I don't grow facial hair. So you won't be able to under, you won't be able to see what's going on because the resolution will be too poor because the bandwidth is too limited. Those are all QoS factors, right? So how does the V edges actually affect the QoS traffic? Well, it puts traffic into what they call queues. Think of a queue kind of like a grocery line, right? If you go to a grocery line, if you go to a grocery store, um, I go shopping with my wife quite often, and we go to the grocery store. And, you know, we buy food and, you know, go bring it home. But when we go there, there's usually, you have this thing called self-checkout, which we're tech savvy. So we get in there, we bang it out, we're out the door. We're not waiting on some checker to, you know, scan our items and, you know, go through all that type of stuff. We bag our own, out the door we go with a small order. You know, if we're out there, we're buying groceries for the week, you know, spending a few hundred dollars, then obviously it's going to take a little bit longer to get through. We're going to go through a dedicated checker because then, you know, we won't have to worry about things. They're trained in order to type in all the PLUs, product lookups, and things like that. We don't have to worry about. So in cases like that, you have the self-checkout line. You have the express lane, right? The express lane is only is limited to a certain amount of items so that, you know, you can get a lot of customers through that. Think of that as your priority queue, your low latency queue or your LL queue. Low latency queuing is going to be all your priority traffic. Can you think of one, maybe two types of priority traffic? Bingo, you're right. Voice over IP and video, right? They're they're delay sensitive. They're latent sensitive, latency sensitive traffic. Meaning that if any type of slowness in the network is, is out there, not configuration issues, but just normal latency, high utilization on a link, or you know, high utilization on the internet for some reason, then yeah, there's gonna be latency in the communication. Because there's going to be latency in the communication, guess what ends up happening? You guessed it. You're going to start to have drop calls. The voice over IP isn't going to come in well. Your you know, video is going to be pixelated. Things like that. It does happen. And when it does, you know, you, you kind of have to deal with it. So the LLQ or low latency Q is Q0 on a V-Edge device. I don't know if it's the same across all devices, but my understanding is it's the same across everything. So when you have low latency queuing, you're gonna be placing all of your priority queuing capability as well as the control. So BFD sessions, OMP peerings, all that stuff is gonna get shoved into Q0. Q1 through Q7, because you have a total of eight queues, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have seven queues, that means that you're gonna have the option of taking that traffic and splitting it up eight ways, right? Anything that you need to be sent out right away has to go Q0. There's no, that to my knowledge, that can't be modified. So you have to send it out Q0. Anything else that you want to pro provide a little bit of something else to or a bandwidth res uh, reservation in a, in a little bit different way, that gets given to a different queue. That's really it. 
and then you go through and whether you want to do a localized data policy, whether you want to do a centralized data policy, those things come into play later on down the road. So that in a nutshell is the high level overview of how QoS works with the vEdge device. Again, I'm not going to go into any super deep detail because, well, it's not so much about how it works specifically in the vEdge, but more or less a QoS in general. So we'll take a look at some details as we go in the next video. I've actually already recorded that. I'm recording this video afterwards because of the fact that I've tested out QoS to a certain degree. Certain things work, certain things don't in my testing. So if I can get them to work at a later point in time, great. But for right now, the, the, the testing that I have done is, is limited to basic policing and base, basic shaping with a CLI and some basic templatizing. And I walk you through that in the next video. Anything advanced like doing classification and scheduling doesn't seem to work very well. Maybe this I'm doing something wrong. Maybe the VEdge devices I'm working with don't support it. I haven't determined those details yet. Point being is once I figure out what's going on and I've you know, I'll, I will point out any faults that I might have had, any, anything that I've learned from that, and I will note them in the video. I'll probably even tweet about them a little bit once I figure out where I made my mistakes. So if I am making a mistake. But at the end of the day, that's where I'm at in terms of QoS. If you have any questions, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see all of you in the next video. Take it easy, guys.